Who are the Golden Knights unsunk heroes for this season? Our discussion comes your way next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Locked On Golden Knights. Chris, we did this segment last year, I believe, right? The Unsung Heroes for VGK. Wow. I'm curious being the same players make the lists. Interesting. I'll go first here. And here's a true unsung hero. For the Golden Knights, what about Braden McNabb? Braden McNabb, I got you. you took good, mine. Huh? I did. You took okay. you 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 took my number one, hundred percent. All right. Played all eighty-two games a season ago. Every game this season, seventy-five. And McNabb already with a career best of twenty-four points. And he's played very well. He's tripled his goal output from one to three. Okay, that's <laughs> kind of silly. And he's a plus 18 in plus minus, plus 116 career-wise. And he has been paired with Shea Theodore. Uh, but he's definitely become the unsung hero for this VGK team because he's done this quietly. Well, and, and the thing is, sorry, you caught me off guard with one other thing I'm going to look up here. But there's another thing to consider is the fact you said he's paired with Shea Theodore. Well, yes, he's traditionally paired with Shea Theodore. Traditionally, yes. But the one thing we're forgetting about Shea Theodore is right now his injury history. Looking at this total number of games played for the last two seasons, he has missed very large chunks of hockey. Uh, Theodore only played 55 games a season ago. He's only played 40 games this season. So basically playing, call it 60% of the season to be a little bit generous from an average perspective. So McNabb is getting it done with other defensive partners. And you mentioned it's quiet. He's probably the quietest guy on the team, unless he's talking about the team not unraveling in the locker room. But he's just a good player. He's solid. He shows up. He puts his work boots on every day. Still one of the best uh, and only hip checks in hockey right now, it seems like. And he's been doing it since day one with the Golden Knights. And you wonder where the organization would be without a staple of the defense, such as Braden McNabb. Yeah, that's your number one. Go ahead. You could go down the list. I'm not going to steal anyone else. You'll probably steal one of mine. No, I mean, we're probably in the same. So let's go against the grain a little bit right now since you took my number one. You took my – early in the season, the Golden Knights' defense was absolutely decimated. How about Caden Korzak? I just want to mix it up a little bit, right? Did I take your did I take your number two? I hope I didn't take your number two. I have um, Korzak, Korzak on my list, yes. Yeah, Korzak, 12, a plus minus of 12, many different defensive partners. So you wonder early on the season when you had all these injuries to so many high-profile defensemen where this team would be without Korzak. And in the same breath, Korzak's got a nice future, I think. Um, a lot of questions about the defense. Will Hannafin get an extension? Will March still get an extension? Will Hannafin get an extension? What's going to happen with Alec Martinez? What is Ben Hutton's role going to be next year? But Korzak is one of those guys who is just kind of waiting to carve out his spot. and then. I'll go one more here. We might probably agree on this one, too. Well, Mike Amadio. Yes, he's on my list. And these are pretty easy. Although, although I thought maybe you wouldn't have a Brayden McNabb, number one. I thought you'd be a, an Amadio guy, number one. No, I mean, it's honestly, I probably was 50-50, and it's whatever I would have looked at first on my monitor to be completely transparent. But Amadio, 13 and 13, 26 points. But again, a player who has been all over the lineup this year. He's been the line two center. He's been on the wings on the third and the fourth line. He might have even had a spot game on the top line at some point. He's not, and he's a player that Coach Cassidy is not afraid 
to take a chance with when they have to start mixing up the lines and which is something that certainly happened a lot throughout this season. Uh, Mario right now, two points from his career best, which was 27 last season with the Golden Knights. So it's pretty uh, certain that Amadio will eclipse his career best. And another player who's uh, going to be a free agent next season. And then you wonder where the dollars and cents will line up for him. I really think a bridge deal is the way for him to go personally for his best situation. But we'll see if the Golden Knights can talk him in to taking a bridge deal. He should have more than 26 points, however, because remember that spell when he was around the net so many times and he missed point blank opportunities. Yep, he really right. should be around 40 points, you know, for this yeah, season. That's probably a little high, but probably. Oh, okay. I just definitely. was throwing that out there. I just want to see if you were awake. Uh, but also, awake. Play- I'm on my second cup of coffee. This, this one has less cream in it. So this one, this has got a little more spice to it. So we're good. Okay. Um, he's playing one minute more than he played last season too. So he's getting a little bit more PT. That number is going to diminish now when Hurdle gets back here, gets into the lineup, I should say, and a lot of the other changes, and we'll see what happens there. Um, Another player, unsung, but we knew that he had the potential, right? And that's got to be Pavel Dorofiev. 19 points, 12 goals on the season. He's got 15 of those points in wins. I started to look at this number a little bit more this uh, past couple of weeks. Uh, The amount of points that players have in wins. So they're helping their team to win on one point there. But also, I want to see if they're scoring uh, some if they're scoring some some points and losses, too, because it shows that they're around the net and what have you. Um, A couple of goals in the last five games for Dorofiev. How about Ivan Barbashev? Barbashev, you know, I think a lot of people expected him to be the 60-point player that he was going back in the 21-22 season, and they saw him put up nearly a point per game in the playoffs. So I think people's expectations, including present company, based on him getting a 5 million AAV for the next four seasons or five seasons, whatever that number was, there was certainly some concern about him getting uh, paid based off of the playoff hype, a la Aiden Hill. Um, but <laughs> don't get me started on that one. We'll save that one for another there. show, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But no, um, Ivan Barbashev, 18 goals, 26 assists. He's a plus 17. He's a plus 17. And listen, 44 points doesn't seem like a lot, but this is his second highest output. Uh, he hmm. had 60 points in the 21 22 season. And then here's Barbashev's point totals going back to when he first became a full-time NHL player. 26, 26, 12 and 38 games in 2021. That's the bubble COVID year and all that. Career best 60 points in 21-22. Regression to 29 points in 22, 23, and 50. Well, okay, so that that was 45 collective points between the two teams. So Mm. Barbashev will eclipse that number eventually. So, you know, and... With watching what Eichel's doing, Barbashev and Marchessault have all been on that line together. So Barbashev definitely gets a lot of credit for goals where he may not wind up on the score sheet, but he's helping Marchessault and Eichel do their thing. I think this is Barbashev's time of year. I mean, he's proven it to us last season where Bingo. he really does step up come playoff time. I think his forecheck is a lot heavier right now. I also think that he's just more in the mix. He's around the puck a lot, and he's definitely a guy that battles for the puck consistently i i like his game um a lot of folks it was funny the way vgk countered um on the same day right that they got rid of riley smith they come back with the signing of barbashev but but don't like, don't, oh, but don't don't tell anyone that was a trade if you if you that mention really, that's a trade that, within this organization they get mad at you that it really was not sucked. a trade it was not a trade oh man we're gonna miss smith oh you signed barbashev they really calmed down uh, the natives with that move. Remember, it depends on which natives you're talking about, but yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. One more for me before we probably kick it off to the next one. You got to you got to give some love to Nick Wah. Nick Wah, another player who has played on all of the lines, and we know what Nick Wah has been as a grinder on the fourth line or the bottom six 
forward depending on the injury circumstances. There's many times when that fourth line has become the third line. That's something that's maybe somewhat forgotten about over the last couple of seasons. I mean, at some point this season and last year, the fourth line was the Silver Knights line. So that's a lot more pressure, of course, on the old fourth line, which became the third line. But Nick Wah, 11 and 27 for 38 points, one point away from his career best, which would have been the 21-22 season. Um, but keep in mind, Nick Wah, 66 games played, that was 78 games played. So his points per game is a little points per game is a little bit better than that 21-22 season. So Nick Wah, again, he's a player who can play in any of the four play center and any of the four uh forward lines or if you got to put him on the wing he'll do it he's not great but he'll get it done so yeah nick was so i think we agree Braden mcnab is probably the like if we're going to pick one player off this list do we agree that Braden mcnab's the man number one yeah and uh i would also throw robin leonard in there for staying on ltir that sounds yeah i know that, that that's been helpful someone's got to do it so good job bro coming up next Two VGK regulars acquired at the trade deadline are fitting in quite well. Thank you. We will talk about the contributions of Noah Hannafin and Anthony Mantha coming your way next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. For a championship team, it's all about making sure that every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time that you need parts and accessories, you need to head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part that you need fits right the first time around. And just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check mark, and you will know that your part is a perfect fit, which is really cool. And if this doesn't happen, if this doesn't work, you get your money back because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. We are back on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. Of course, uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow already. Is WTF what the Friday? Saturday is the Chris Times Chris show, the YouTube exclusive. Although they will be on the road in Arizona this week. They'll, do you have like a, a mullet wig you're going to wear to Mullet Arena or anything special for this trip? Yeah, I'm going to Portillo's and eating chocolate cake. That's special. That is special. Um, how much has the loss of Noah Hannafin? Affected the Cal Gary Flames? That's the question here. Well, Cal Gary is four and nine since he left the organization in that trade. And it wasn't VGK, just him, but yeah. That, that, that I know. Part. Well, okay. Let me work on this narrative a little hey, bit more. And VGK currently is, is thriving. Uh, six points in 13 games. And he's second in minutes now to Peter. Angelo, Petrangelo, uh, 2251 per game. Noah Hannafin, he's wow, been yeah. a good get for VGK, for sure. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just about what Hannafin is doing, but you look at Nick Haig's game. I mean, Nick Haig, combination of probably a healthy scratch and finding, I'm not going to blast that white cloud, that's not the point of this, but finding a, a different partner that can possibly help his personal skill set skill set. Um, Nick Haig is certainly like Nick Haig and Zach Whitecloud are kind of both stay at home defensemen. Whitecloud has a little more mobility than than Nick Haig. Um, but certainly you put Hannafin out there who has probably nearly as much mobility as Shea Theodore. Shea Theodore has better hands in tight situations where he can deke directly around a player, where Hannafin just kind of builds up that speed and kind of gets that rush game going in a different manner but in any event it certainly has complemented Nick Hague's game as it seems like coming down the stretch and into the playoffs that Hague and Hannafin are becoming an inseparable pair so now obviously White Cloud and Hutton are kind of on the outside looking in it looks like but who knows I mean there's still 
six or seven games left for the Golden Knights. We'll see what Cassidy does to spin the dials there. But yeah, Hannafin, I mean, not can't say enough positive about him besides what if the choice is to extend Hannafin or March or so at the end of the season and you can't have both. Ah, they'll that's do the, both. That's they the problem. Will. They will. That's the problem. They'll I think they're I think Hannafin is definitely getting extended. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you too, while we're at it, about White Cloud. Is he just a healthy scratch because it is truly a numbers game, or has he fallen off? Has he dropped off a little bit for the Golden Knights? Oh, it, it's both 100%. Um, I mean, if I was to rank the defensemen right now and taking combinations and all of that out of the equation, I'll go with seven and eight. I think seven, and again, recency bias definitely plays into this as well, but seven is Hutton, eight is White Cloud. Now, obviously, one being a lefty and a righty, that could certainly affect, you know, who goes in over the other. But if we're simply talking on skill set, White Cloud would be number eight on my depth chart, which number eight in games one through 50 would would have you in the lineup in a regular basis, given all the injuries. But as the team is coming back to full health at the best possible time of the year, especially the defense, you know, there's, there's only so much room to go around. And we're, no one's a fan of that 11-7 garbage or that, 11 5 garbage or of that 11 6 garbage and all the things we've seen in the past couple of seasons with regards to having to go a player short because there's no salary cap issues in vegas not this year apparently but definitely in the past that's been a problem but yeah white clouds number eight right now white clouds number eight okay we spoke about hannafin and the same time they had the acquisition of anthony mantha at the trading deadline and he's currently on the third line 34 points when he was acquired from Washington. He's got eight points in 13 games with the VGK. So combined in those 13 games, you have this combo of Hannafin and Mantha. They've got uh, 14 points in 13 games. And I would say that those trades definitely paid dividends for the Golden Knights. Mantha is going to be, hopefully, last season's playoff Ivan Barbashev you probably were going to say the same thing at some points and now we have two Ivan Barbashevs kind of obviously one Barbashev and then Mantha so I mean you got to give all the credit in the world to McCrimmon not just for the moves that he makes but for having the foreshadow I mean think about leading up to the trade deadline how bad the Golden Knights were and then Mm -hmm. that makes you wonder if they don't make these moves for Hannafin and Mantha where would the Golden Knights have been like would they be possibly scra- scratching the surface for the second seed in the Pacific Division? We'll hit that, obviously, in the third segment. But point being is, without these two players, I think it's a much different situation where the Golden Knights are scraping to hold on to that playoff spot and probably a first round out, given the fact that Mark Stone would not most likely be there in at least the first round or at least the first few games of the first round. Who knows how that's going to play out? So. McCrimmon, McPhee, Foley for believing, and McCrimmon for finding ways to uh, continuously fleece the other 31 general managers in the National Hockey League. It's not fleecing anyone. They're just stupid. Uh, a goal and an assist in against uh, Vancouver the other night, the early goal uh, for Mantha, too, which more or less set the tone in that game. And we were telling everyone about how important it was to score early against Vancouver because 35 other- 10 and 2 I think I saw in last night's broadcast when 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 Vancouver scores first 35 10 and 2 okay well so I think it was actually- I think that's what what it was when I saw it in the games last night so that's crazy that's a huge for number. once our key was was correct that's pretty good we're we're trending upwards I- yeah that was all you 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 called that in the previous matchup a few weeks ago yeah no it's important to score first against the uh, the Canucks coming up ahead a look at the Pacific Division race. We'll talk about that. Maybe we could talk about that Donnie Brook to start the Rangers Devils game as well. <laughs> Boy, was that fun last night. That was awesome. Could you imagine? Never mind. I'm not going to. No, we'd have to. Another reason to start the fourth line every game for VGK because they're the only ones that could sort of mix it up. I can't imagine line three. Okay, we'll get to that. Shut up, Tony. Tony. Right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA account? That's right. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. And uh, But get this. Now through April the 30th, 
Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold, it gives you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through the end of this month through April the 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. That's Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information. This claim as of quarter three, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Welcome back. This edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. You see that uh, I'm, I'm learning how to pause now around those little drop-ins, like the shut up, Tony. Do you notice real quick? I just, I mean, you've had a lot of practice. Let it play. Yeah. Cause I could still hear that in my head as I'm just speaking generally. Uh, of course. So, what's forget. funny is the looks on our faces where we've been out of sync a little bit in our ad reads sometimes. Like I kind of wait all the time. I, I usually, I mean, I miss it sometimes. Let's be clear about this. I'll start, I'll, I'll point the blame there, but I have to, I, I wait a second for you sometimes just to make sure you're going to read the right one. Like, like we have our, this is my napkin. It's a post-it note. And I, I, on the left side there, well, there's my sports bets from yesterday. It was, it was six, Bad day. Three and Bad three. day. Three and three, three and three, three and three, but all okay. pluses. So I made money, made a unit. Um, but like eBay, Robin Hood, but I, I wait a second. I, I got to wait a second. But I, I think Tony was waiting for me to put the ad up earlier in the second in the eBay one. So we, we, we're getting there. We're getting there. No, it's a work in progress. I was waiting for the fog to clear. It's just rolling in again. Today's a good day. I think you, you change your location or you close your drapes, one of the two. Yeah, it's a pretty good day. Uh, oh, of course, tomorrow, WTF, what the Friday, Saturday, the Chris Times Chris show all here. That's the YouTube exclusive. And uh, we'll get some videos, I'm sure. Make sure you send, like, a ton of content from down there. In I, oh, I think I'm going to. I think I'll probably blend it into Saturday's Chris and Chris show as well. But, yeah, we're going to have some fun down there. Are you going to take little Chris to one of those college bars down there? I'm just kidding. Okay. So, I, oh, before we get into anything about the Pacific Division, boy, that was exciting last night. I missed it live. I was, unfortunately, Why is it called a Donnie around. Brook? Ed educate me. Why is it a Donnie Brook? Educate me. I don't know because like... everyone's just going crazy, throwing haymakers. Okay, I don't I've never know. heard of that, but that's what I was asking. You never so heard of Donnie Brook? Nope. Okay, nope. you can Google that as I talk about this. So, a five v five fight right out of the shoot. Great. Uh, it was, <laughs> it was the Devils and my Rangers. It uh, resulted in ejections for Rempe, Goudreau, Miller, and Truba for the Rangers. McDermott, Tierney, Nall, and Marino uh, for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, so the Devils and Rangers were both down two forwards and two defensemen for 59-plus minutes. Um, you may recall the reason why there were eight players ejected, and the reason why they got into it was that hit, that nasty hit, Matt Rempe on Jones, Siegenthaler, uh, Jonas Siegenthaler, I should say. And and uh, that was that elbow. We talked about that on the show. Um, and that led to Rempe's four-game suspension. The best part, outside of the fighters and everything going on on the ice, was Peter Lavalette and Travis Green about to tangle there, like yelling at each other from – they got. how do you get behind the, the benches there to almost scrap? They were yelling at each other. And that was good old-fashioned hockey. The one thing that stands out this season uh, compared to recent times in the NHL, are they allowing the players to fight a little bit longer? Because we've had some really good scraps and probably three with Rempe himself. Do they allow them to fight longer? No, I don't think so. I mean, you have a couple things happening. The players, I mean, not last last night, there's no code. Let's be clear about that. Good Pearl Jam album, no code, by the way. Um, but when the players go down or when they get tired, the refs still stop them fast. Now, in, in that situation, there is absolutely no order to be had. Uh, Donnie Brook, meaning a disorderly gathering or free-for-all fight, takes free its all. name from an annual fair formerly held at Donnie Brook in Ireland. Due to its disorder, the fair was abolished in 1855. So, 
don't know what the heck happened, but if if the if the history of this fair dating back to 1855 still rings true today in 2024, it must have been a heck of a good time. Down That'd there. be a good time. Um, Let's revive your this. Brook, in your in your Donnie Brook. There's the fog. Your Donnie Brook had eight 10 minute misconducts, <laughs> ten five minute fighting majors given out because everybody after the first two players is ejected and gets 10. So by my math, that's going to be 130 penalty minutes, two seconds into the game. And that would have been a spot, honestly, where I and a lot of us probably missed a bet. You can usually get a good plus on if there's going to be a fight in a game. And it really seemed like the buildup was there. Even if it was minus 250, there was going to be a fight. That was free money last night. If you had the over on four and a half fights, you cast your ticket two seconds into the dang game. That was great. And uh, the best view, I think, was Molly Walker of the New York Post had Scream. that shot down uh, from upstairs. Oh, that was okay. great. Well, that was she great. had the best video, I thought. Yeah, okay, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. That was good. Back on track. Oil drop must win game. Canucks like extend lead. So Edmonton lost last night five to nothing. And meanwhile, in Dallas, Dallas is surging. They've won, I think, eight straight now. Eight, something eight like now. Yeah, they're awesome. Isn't they're it? Great. Okay, great. Just in time. Comment to, to the game. night uh, from the broadcast. Uh, Peter DeBoer was wearing a Game 7 suit jacket yesterday. Uh, that was that was a what does that mean? comment that I heard. It was just a nice – he was wearing a nice jacket. It looked really good. It looked, looked sharp. That's all. It okay. Looked good. Was he hungover again? Uh, okay. Vancouver won with its third-string goalie last night in Tempe. And uh, the Vancouver Canucks topped the Coyotes two to one. They probably tripled the amount of shots on goal in that game, and they were only up one to nothing. And then they scored uh, another goal late. Uh, Quinn Hughes, a goal and an assist. He's starting to heat up. He's, he's, and he's so, good. yeah, he's awfully good, right? And Vancouver now with 102 points and six games remaining, they lead the VGK by 10 points. I think that that's going to pretty soon be wrapped up. I just have the feeling. Uh, Vancouver is going to clinch there. Uh, Canucks also extend the lead over the Oil. You want to call them the Oil or the Oilers? Okay, Oil, uh, the Oilers. Oil, okay. Uh, so now seven points ahead of the Oilers. But the focus now is on the race between VGK and Edmonton. Now the Oilers with a three-point lead over VGK, a game in hand, we might add. And so Edmonton, how about this stretch right now? So Edmonton plays on Friday at Colorado, Chris. Then they're at the Flames, which have flamed out. But also, this is the Battle of Alberta. Yes. So watch your back. I would have everyone drop their gloves there. Uh, two seconds in. Donnie Brook. And, and, and then uh, definitely a Donnie Brook. And then they visit VGK next Wednesday. I pretty much, I knew, right? I was on track with what Donnie Brook meant. Everyone throws hands. That's it. I th no one, no one's coming to Vegas. I think you said they visit VGK. I think VGK is on the road against Vancouver and Edmonton next week. Then they It'd be nice then if VGK they came here. Visits, visits VGK no, visits Vancouver about... and visits Edmonton. Yeah, you said they, they visit VGK. Edmonton. Come on, Tony, get with it. Okay. Get with the program. Right, um, no, I mean I'm with you on everything that you said right there. Um, a ten point gap, obviously one game in hand for the Golden Knights. One head to head matchup. So. The Golden Knights have a chance to at least get in the heads a little bit of the Vancouver Canucks to remind them that they're still there. So that's certainly a good thing. I mean, you never know what'll happen. Like I said, 10 points, the Golden or the Edmonton, geez, the Vancouver Canucks. Golden Knights can wind up finishing with seven, 100, 106 points. Vancouver needs five points to lock out the division as far as the Golden Knights are concerned. So unlikely the Golden Knights get there, but you never know if the Golden Knights can at least put some doubt in their mind. But like you said, the focus is going to be on the Oilers right now. Um, Oilers, I think, are 5-2-3 and three if I saw in their last 10 games. Only scored two goals against the Blues, got blanked against the Stars. Now they got the Avalanche and the Flames, like you said. Then Vegas. This is an incredibly difficult stretch of the schedule for the Edmonton Oilers, who... When they play the Flames, it'll be on a back. The Oilers, okay, here you go. The, Tony, uh-oh. Tony, I got to get the button ready. I got to get the button ready because Tony's about to flip outs. The Edmonton Oilers have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have eight, eight back -to -back. games remaining. Oh. <laughs> How many of those are back-to-back -back scenarios in the last eight games? Don't even. Don't even tell me, like, there's two back-to-backs. No, no. More? Three? 
They have three back to backs in eight games. The Oilers have three back to backs in their next eight games. Okay, the tell Flames us. Flames are after the Avalanche. Oh, geez. The Canucks are after the Coyotes. Are you kidding me? The Avalanche, and these are two consecutive road games. They go to Arizona and Colorado in consecutive days. This is Golden Knights are Golden Knights going to have home ice advantage in the first round, folks. There you go. There you go. If this isn't rigged, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. This is absolutely rigged. They knew it would come down to Edmonton and VGK. You should not be playing any back to backs, okay, at this stage. You should not be playing all of your games in the state of California. You should only be playing the Kings and VGK, who, I mean, they're Pacific division rivals of sorts they should have been playing down the stretch this is goofy af oh i'm sorry it's not wtf day but. i'm not pressing the button i'm with tony you're not wrong you're not wrong and it's not rigged but you're the schedule balance in this circumstance Whoa. when teams are our face are racing down the stretch like this like i know they're gonna say it all balances out throughout the season with back-to-backs and miles travel blah 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 Garbage. i'm sure fine whatever but i will certainly meet you that this is a challenging circumstance that the NHL has put the Oilers in down the stretch. And it's absolutely yeah, I think brutal. the Golden Knights are also aware of the circumstance. I think they've been aware of it for a long time. And I'm sure this is some, you know, some inception level deep layering thoughts about where the Golden Knights would be and how they can inch inch away to uh catch the Oilers. And yeah, and you know, thinking of another thing, I think you and I both put the Golden Knights between 98 and 102 points. It's looking pretty likely right about that's now. Pretty good. You might even get to 103. Wow, that's pretty. Yeah, 98 and 102. I'll have to go back and, and I'm sure we did a prediction show, and I'm, we did. I'm sure I, I wrote something for someone who I'm not talking about anymore, and I'm curious what I predicted then too. So yeah, my locks of the night are on. I'm on a heater with that. I've had some really good. Are success. you one and nine in your last ten or something? Like I can't. I cannot pick. I cannot pick the winning side at all. You're calling I'm the players calling. though. The players, that's that's what counts, right? Because I'm getting points. We need to someday keep track of all that. But I say I'm going get... to, and like I did for like the first 12 games. Like I was putting the records up next to us. Like 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 the people that were, you know, our, our picks and all that for like the first 10 games. And then yeah. Then we just kind of quit. We appreciate everyone tuning in. Of course, uh, tomorrow we will have a WTF show, and then Chris and little Chris will be off to Tempe, Arizona to see VGK. It's kind of fun being in a visiting barn. Although percentage of all the night percentage of VGK fans there in Arizona. You know, I don't know if it's as high just because of the size of the arena. I feel like it should be like 50%. Like if this was in Gila or River Gila River Arena, they're you know 18, 15, whatever that, that big stadium is in Glendale down there. I would say it'd be probably between 60 to 65%. That number might shrink a little bit just because of the size of the rink in Arizona. People just might, you know, there's 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 four thousand people that like going to hockey games in Arizona. Let's be clear about this. So I don't know. We appreciate I'll say everyone. 40 60 Arizona. That's my that's my that's my projection. Go. Okay. Tomorrow you can also do that on WTF Pro. Uh especially our everydayers. Thanks so much for locking us in. And of course, Ooh, uh, that's good. Was that yeah, did you just make I just that came up, up or was that, that or was that in the I, copy? <laughs> What kind of <laughs> napkin? I didn't put that on the napkin. I just made that up. Locking us in. And of in. course, I like, that. I like that. Locking us in. So lock us in and uh, make sure that you make plans uh, for our show tomorrow as well. For my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco. Let's get out of here. And we'll see you again tomorrow with the preview of the Arizona game and much, much more on WTF Friday. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Take 